Which persuades me that you think almost as highly of the play as I do myself. What is the name of this friend of yours? Oscar. <laughs> Oscar Wilde. Oh, Jesus Christ. I hear you're writing a new play. Superb. Avotos. Constance, my dear, beautiful wife. You and my sons are the things that tie me to life. Oscar, let's run away. Someone no one could find us. You don't know what you're saying. Not wearing your silk stockings today, Oscar. You go too far, sir. No, you go too far, madam. So, uh, it must be nice to be over, back over in Dublin again. It's wonderful to be here and very exciting to be presenting uh, this film about Oscar. Yeah, and back in his, well, his birthplace. I mean, yeah, and his neighbourhood. Yeah, especially here, yeah, it's around Marion Square. And his statue is just down the, down the street. Very weird statue, though. It, it is a moment. Well, the three of them, the, the yeah. trip, I guess. And it's, yeah, and so colourful, though, which, yeah. is, which is one of the wonderful things about it. But the house is across the road, and that also, I love uh, being in the square, looking at the house and imagining him looking as a little child through the top windows. Yeah. Well, one of the, uh, one of the amazing things about... I mean, his, his life was fascinating. He travelled an awful lot, but I mean, the end of his life, the, what part you focus on is him in exile, you know? So that is very much a different, I mean, a, f a forced move mm. is, is very tough to, to portray. And I mean, the, you're very familiar with his work and you've covered him a number of times. So how did you get into that mindset for playing him in that? I wonder, well, I suppose there are so many parts of his life that are fascinating. I mean, I don't know whether you know, for example, he had his two sisters burnt to death in front of him, uh, half-sisters, when he was little. Uh, and so I, uh, sometimes I thought, God, it'd be great to start. I mean, someone's life beginning with seeing their two sisters burning to death is quite an extraordinary thing too. There's so many things in him, um, scenes and sequences uh, all the way through his life that are fascinating. Um, but what I really wanted to try and do was um, attack the story where everyone else seems to have left off because all the other films about Wilde stop really when he goes into prison. Um, and for me, that's when the story gets really interesting. Uh, his punishment and his exile, which was another kind of punishment, um, is, is the story that excites me. He was the kind of the last great 19th century vagabond uh, after Verlaine. Uh, these two jailbirds who, you know, sat on the boulevard drinking absinthe uh, and catching for drinks and uh, f friends with rent boys and petty criminals and stuff like that. It, it, for me, it's a story of great glamour. Yeah, because turn of the century, Paris is, has been immortalised a number of times on film, you know, but it's always in the sort of more fanciful or way, it, it doesn't show the the decrepit nature of a number of, of people's lives in that period. Well, also, I think when, when people do attack those stories, you know, the biopic normally is a, is, a, is a kind of traditionally told story of someone, and I didn't want my story to be like that. And apart from anything else, I didn't really have the money to make that kind of uh, thing. I, I wanted to make more of a fly-on-the-wall type of uh, uh, film uh, about Oscar. And, um, and I suppose also telling the story of his, uh, um, I, I guess, you know, just the hotel rooms and uh, being on the road in trains. He's, he's always on the move in my story. And he's living on his wits to an extent as well because he, he doesn't have a lot of money. What money he gets, he seems to spend wildly. Um, so he, it's, it's a very interesting to see that, him trying to survive essentially right yeah but he is a survivor as he says in the film there's nothing like an irish tinker when he gets into his stride he's got endless little plans going uh, for getting money and uh, if anyone accosts him on the street which he asks them to, to borrow money he's uh, he's a, a great character in his decline i think and um he remains humorous and human yeah, and I mean, that's, that's the aspect of him that's most engaging, is that he keeps his wit and his humour despite mm -hmm. everything that's gone wrong. And so it, that, that gives a sort of wonderful dichotomy of, you know, between the, uh, these terrible things have happened to him and continue to happen to him, but he's not letting it get him down. Exactly. Although you do see in some, you do allow 
that to break through. And, and well, it is also a great tragedy, but like m many great tragedies, it's, it's kind of surrounded by things that are not quite so tragic and also quite funny as well. I think uh, he, he carried his humour even right into his deathbed, really. Yeah. And I mean, the, the, the title coming from the children's story that he wrote, but it, it does reflect him as a person as well. In a way, in a kind of um, ironic way, it does, because he was, uh, you know, always uh, the poster, actually, the sequence that, that the poster comes from is, um, you know, him, uh, a, a time release thing of him, you know, working a bar uh, during the day. And he's, you know, very good natured and gets drunker and drunker and uh, gets someone to pay for everything. And uh, he's... He's surviving, you know, in, in, in the reduced circumstances that, that he has. And I think that's what's uh, very appealing to me about him. Yeah, and there was, a, there was that period in time in, b before the First World War where there was a number of members of royal families just sort of living around in various mm. different cities, mm. just, you know, on the lash, essentially. Exactly. Yeah, so he's Irish royalty. We didn't have our own royal family, but <laughs> he's as good as we get. Yeah. But this was a passion project for you. You've spent years trying to make it. I mean, what was that journey like? Was that was it difficult? Um, well, it was obviously it was it was a long journey, and uh, it had some ups and downs in it. I suppose the ups were when something went r well, and the downs, which happened more often, was when uh, you know we thought we were going and we were shooting in September one year, and then we weren't, and then the whole thing you know went back again two or three years, and. Um, it was, it was quite debilitating, I suppose, that. But to be quite honest, it happens all the time. It's so difficult to get films financed these days um, that it's just par for the course. I think it was a good thing for me in a way because it gave me the opportunity to really test all the ideas that I'd had in the, in the script because if I still liked them after 10 years, it meant that I must, I must at least like them. Yeah, and, and that... Directing your own work, is that something that you'd like to do again? Uh, I would love to do it again, yes. That's great. Thanks very much. Thank you very much Cheers. indeed.